Okay, so litigation hold. I mean, what do you need to be thinking about if you are, it's not something you implement, right? It's a feature when you need it, you turn it on on the, the mailboxes you want to protect. Well, you, you but definitely you need to have, have to a, a process in place beforehand. Okay, what, what triggers an, a litigation hold? Who can trigger a litigation hold? Is it um, the certain personnel? In other words, you have to know ahead of time who can, can issue one. And then you have to know, okay, when a litigation hold is implemented, what do you want to do with it? Now, in Exchange 2010, they do make it pretty straightforward. And if you, if you have you know, clear notice of it, you can ch choose your custodians, mm -hmm. uh, put the litigation hold. The um, challenges really are outside of Exchange 2010. Okay, how, how far reaching is this litigation hold? Is it on the file servers? Is it up in SharePoint if you have that? Is it on those local PSDs if you haven't imported them? How far reaching is it? Do you need to copy this, that person's laptop out of the time of the litigation hold? So these are all things that you need to put as part of your process. These are the steps you need to do. From and a lot data. of those have nothing to do with Exchange, right? Yeah, I mean, if absolutely. you're talking about having to image people's laptops or mm -hmm. grab data from their mo mobile devices, mm -hmm or inventory all the flash drives or mm -hmm. removable media they have, you know, clearly there's no magic button you can push in Exchange that'll do that, exactly. which is too bad, maybe in the next version. They can, yes, have the, the master uh, yes. <laughs> console. Yes, actually in Exchange 15, I hear there's going to be a new do what I mean button. Yes, exactly. And you just push it. that and it'll take well, you care know, of I'm really looking for, for the telepathy um, feature. That would be very nice. That'll be in you have to press E15 SP1. Yeah. Oh, okay, yeah, that's good. We're getting that. <laughs> okay, so litigation hold is much more a process issue than it is an implementation issue on the Exchange side. Mm -hmm. uh, retention policies, you know, we could spend hours talking about mm -hmm. the mechanics of implementing those, so I don't want to jump into that particular tar pit. Mm -hmm. um, well, the one thing I want to, you know, there's so many resources out on the web these days that people can look at for creating policy, for implementing policy, examples out there. I mean, I encourage people, just do some research on it. Spend, you know, an afternoon or something going out there, seeing all the different things out there. It's not as scary as it seems. Yes, you know, the, the, the thunderous, you know, you must have a retention policy, but it actually is pretty straightforward. A lot of companies do it. Look at examples of people, your peers, et cetera, that, how that's done. Okay, so when you say that, though, mm -hmm. that, that brings up something, and this doesn't really have anything to do with exchange, but I think it's worth touching on. So if I talk to my peers and come up with a policy based on what they tell me, um, how do I know it's a good policy? I mean, how do I know that it's going to protect me? Practice. Seriously, I, what I would do is run a drill. You know, run a drill that, um, you know, uh, with your attorneys. I mean, not everybody has in-house in counsel, but, you know, you, you probably want to spend a few of those billable hours with the, with the attorney and discuss the, what you're planning on implementing, et cetera, um, to go out there. But how is it a good policy that you are able to run it? So actually run it in place. Say, okay, let's say we got sued and these five people um, are our key custodians and we need to implement the retention hold. Oh, right. No, I mean, I, I get the idea of, of practicing like mm -hmm. you would for disaster recovery, and I think mm -hmm. that's really sound advice. But is there anything you can do ahead of time to make sure that your policy or that the results of your policy are not going to cause you trouble when they go in front of a judge? I mean, should, should you have your policy reviewed? I mean, I mean, it always is a good idea to, to have your attorney go over your policy, but sometimes the attorneys don't understand it. Um, I think what it comes down to is are you, as the IT administrator, confident that you could go in front of a judge and go through your retention policy and say, this is why we do it, this is how we do it, this is the, where it's being implemented. Um, the other thing is that you want to make sure that when you have litigation hold, retention policy, et cetera, that you're able to keep that data in its pristine state. You're able to preserve that data as it was. And to do that, you probably want to check the data again during those drills and go back mm -hmm. and say, you know, has anything changed, you know, between the, this file here and this file there? You know, hash it, whatever happens to be, that's, that's some of the ways. But in a, in a lot of ways, you know, I'm kind of running around the question a little bit because it is a challenge because you don't really know until you're actually in litigation because um, there's a lot of different things that, that go along with it. And the best thing is just audit it, audit your policy, audit your litigation hold, and realize that just about everything is discoverable. So just make sure that you have your process covers all of that.